So, in October of 1967, uh-huh. two guys went out in the middle of the woods and filmed what could possibly have become the most iconic cryptid footage in the history of mankind. And if it's not, then they may have filmed the greatest hoax in the history of mankind. One way or another, these guys are going into the record books. And of course, what I'm talking about is what has come to know be uh, come to known as the Patterson Gimlin film. That's right. It's yes. that footage of Sasquatch walking through the woods. Can I do my impression of it? Yeah. Let's see your impression of it. Oh, Bob, you see that over there? What is that? Holy shit. <laughs> what is that? That's what we're going to be deep diving today on today's episode of Make a Strange, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the show. We are your hosts, Derek and Johnny. I'm Derek. That's Johnny. How you doing today, bud? Pretty good. Uh, I switched from grande to a tall nutters. Yeah. Does it make you feel tall to drink a tall nutters coffee? I don't know why they call it tall. It's kind of like the chode of coffees. It's like kind of stout. They have a whole backwards uh, European logic to the whole naming scheme at Starbucks that I'm not yeah, grande. 100% clear on. I know grande means large and yeah. venti means 20. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know where tall came from. But you're feeling good. You're feeling energized, caffeinated, jazzed up. Maybe. Well, you're going to need all of your energy okay. to survive today's episode. Uh, because we're talking, Survive? we're talking Bigfoot today. Uh-huh. We're, we're getting to it. We're finally going to give the people what they want. When you heard that the guys at Mega Strange were doing a podcast all about cryptids, your first thought was they're going to talk about Bigfoot. Yeah. And here we are two years into our show and we haven't really covered it. Ignore all the other episodes on Bigfoot. This is the definitive one. What did we say about Bigfoot in the past? I think we did do uh we did a deep dive on Bigfoot and Mothman, I think, together. Or yeah. We did like famous cryptids. What we have done in the past is the Florida Bigfoot. Yeah. The skunk ape. Okay. And we also did an episode on extinct animals where we covered Gigantopithecus. Yeah. Which is an extremely large bipedal ape that some people think may not actually be extinct and might explain where Bigfoot comes from. Okay. But today, baby, we're going to blow those past episodes out of the water. Today's episode actually was not intended to be all about Bigfoot. No. This was going to be... A history of the most famous cryptid photos. But what happened was we started with this photo of Bigfoot, which is actually a still image from a movie. And there was so much information on just this event, it turned into the entire episode. So later on, this could be an ongoing sub-series in Mega Strange, where we're, we could explore the picture of the Loch Ness Monster... We could explore, what's another famous cryptid photo other than the, the two I've just mentioned, Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster? I mean, there's like newer ones that are kind of hilarious. Like, the you know me, I love that uh, Jersey Devil one that just looks like a flying goat. Yeah. Uh, that one's amazing. But and, I think we kind of covered the history of that. And we could also go into like the famous alien autopsy uh, yeah. video that they played on Fox television in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Though I think that thing has been debunked many times. But... That's enough about There's the- got to be more cryptid photos, right? Oh, there are. And okay. we know that our mega strangers and correspondents out there can send us all the cryptid photos that they want us to deep dive. We'll take those suggestions. We'll do the research on them. But this uh, film, which is known as the Patterson-Gimlin film, is the famous Bigfoot video uh, that most people have probably seen at some point in their life. This is kind of the go-to when you talk about 
Bigfoot, whenever there's a Bigfoot documentary, they always show this video of the Bigfoot walking through the woods. And one still image of the video, which I believe uh, is frame 352, has gone on to become the universal symbol for Sasquatch. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, Sasquatch kind of mid-stride, one arm back, one arm forward. We've used it for the branding of this show. I was going to say, in the logo, we you kind of don't... I mean, you might see at the end of the show, but uh, yeah, it's in there. Yeah. The footage was filmed by two people, uh, Bob Gimlin and Roger Patterson, which is why it's known as the Patterson-Gimlin film. Um, Bob Gimlin is still alive. Okay. Roger Patterson died in 1972. And even though the film was released over 50 years ago, it has still yet to be debunked. Let that sink in. This film, in all these years, cannot be proven to be a hoax. It still lives on, which is why some people claim that if it is a hoax, it's the greatest hoax of all time. You hear that? People out there, you and your fucking weed-smoking friends can't debunk this shit. They can't debunk it. In fact... People have tried to debunk it, yeah, and they've failed. Um, A professor of anatomy from Idaho University, a guy who goes by the name of Jeffrey Meldrum, I say he goes by the name because (laughs) is that his real name? We don't know. Is uh, he's one of the few academics to openly study Sasquatch, and he says that he believes the video is not obviously fake. Mm. His main argument is that the Video was made in 1967. Okay. The same year Planet of the Apes came out, which won the Academy Award for special effects. Okay. So he's like, look at Planet of the Apes, the cutting edge of special effects in 1967. The suit in this video looks more realistic than the movie that won the Academy Award for special effects for making monkey suits. I mean, I guess, was it in the 80s they did the Sasquatch episode of A Million Dollar Man or whatever? The six million dollar man. Million, sorry, too much wrestling. Uh, yeah. that looks pretty like spot on as well. Um, maybe some people say that um, when you look at a guy in a suit, it kind of looks a little doughy. It yeah. looks a little baggy. But when you look at the video, the creature in the video. By the way, the creature in the video has a name. It's uh, Patty. 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 The Sasquatch has been identified as female. In okay. the video, due to the large hairy breasts that are, I was visible waiting for you to say that. In the yeah, famously, the Sasquatch has large hairy boobies. Hey. Uh, and that's how so, I like them. <laughs> cutting that out. No, you're leaving that in because that's one of the arguments against the video being real is that there's no other primate really that displays hairy boobies. So they're like, it's got to be fake. But then some other. Uh, anthropologists say like, well, this is an undiscovered species and Mm. there, there are, um, it's not so unheard of, but what I was going to say about it being a suit is that when you wear a suit, a monkey suit in a movie, typically it looks kind of doughy. It looks like it's hanging off of you. People point to the video of Patty and they say that you can see actual muscle definition. Mm. You can see like, um, like the calf muscles clenching and, and bone structure in there. So they say if it is a suit, it's one of the most high-tech suits ever created. I know sometimes bears will walk on two legs. I always wondered if that, like, it was just a weird-looking bear. But it looks so manly. <laughs> well, except for... I, I always thought it was a... I just assumed it was a guy in a suit, too. When okay. I found out that they were like, oh, Patty's female, I was like, okay, say What? I mean, now I know. It's food for thought. It's for uh, trivia on Jeopardy. The female Bigfoot featured in the 1967 film has a name. What is Patty? That's the answer. Going to win you $1,000 someday. Lock that away in your brain for trivia. Do you, if you, okay, sorry. Real talk. I, I just know you know the answer to this, and I want to know real quick. Okay. Uh, there's three contestants on Jeopardy. If, like, only the winner wins their money, right? Or do the second... And third place, second and third place get um, consolation prizes, which typically is like one thousand dollars for third place and two thousand dollars for second place, which is provided by their sponsor. It's usually somebody like Tylenol. But in the past, in the nineties, 
The consolation prizes would be like game show prizes. Like, uh, and for second place, we have a Super Nintendo. Oh, the yeah. Super Nintendo console provided by the Nintendo Corporation. Play all your favorite games with your family with up to <laughs> two controllers. His 16-bit graphics, the Super Nintendo. They would do stuff like that, you know. They would give away like a blender or an ice cream maker. But then after a while, people were like, just give me a thousand bucks. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I watched a, a Double Dare and it's like, I don't know how many kids had to win fucking mongoose uh, bicycles that... I always thought that prize sucked. Yeah. Anyway, back to Mongoose Bigfoot. was like getting rid of their unsellable bicycles. Yeah. Not only did the video um, go on to be extremely famous and provide visual evidence of Bigfoot, some would say, but Patty left behind something else. A steaming pile of footprints. Oh. Footprints. Damn. And... Uh, we have casts, plaster casts of Patty's footprints, um, which show accurate primate anatomy. It shows like uh, pressure ridges and and uh, toe prints. Okay, you know, like like um, you know, it looks real. Basically, it looks real. Anthropologists are impressed. If it is a fake, they're like, "This is one of the best fakes we've ever seen." Fifty years, it's never been able to be debunked. But how did it get made? What are the circumstances? Let's, I want to give everybody out there the story of how this video was supposedly shot. And then you decide for yourself if you believe that this is real Bigfoot or not. And I have a theory. Okay. By the end of today's episode, you might believe in Bigfoot. Everyone out there in the comments, if you believe in Bigfoot after this video, type I believe. Type I believe. And if you don't believe, type I don't believe. And if we convinced you, if you were like, I didn't believe, but now I do, type, you got me. Yeah, yeah, you got me. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it after doing all of this research, but it definitely provided some interesting food for thought. I, you know, there's a lot more to think about here than I imagined when I first got into it. So, um, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were both rodeo riders and amateur boxers. That's their background. Okay, a lot of, a lot of hits to the head. A lot of hits to the head, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, living an adventurous lifestyle, a rough-and-tumble lifestyle. Yeah. These were some fun, thrill-seeking, adventuring kind of dudes. And it is said that it was really Roger Patterson who was the one who led the charge for hunting Bigfoot. And he became interested in Bigfoot after he had read an article about Bigfoot in 1959 in an issue of True Magazine. The article had been written by somebody named Ivan T. Sanderson, and it said that there had been recently discovered Bigfoot tracks in the Bluff Creek area of Washington, which was near where he lived at the time, so he became interested in finding Bigfoot. Uh, in 1962, he visited the Bluff Creek area to just start his Bigfoot hunting adventure. And he returned again two years later in 1964. And when he returned in 1964, he was able to link up with some timber cruisers from the area, some guys who worked in the logging industry, and they knew the forest really well. And they took him on a tour of the Bluff Creek area. And it was there in 1964 that Roger Patterson said that he found fresh Bigfoot tracks. Which for him was, he described, it was an almost unbearably exciting, bone-chilling experience. He felt like he was on the precipice of a new scientific discovery. He had been reading about Bigfoot, and after five years, he had found fresh Bigfoot tracks, and he's like, by God, I'm going to be the guy who shows Bigfoot to the world. He returned three years later and started filming a docudrama slash pseudo-documentary about Bigfoot. And okay. here is where the story starts to cast a shadow of doubt over what's going on because people have claimed later on that they sold Roger Patterson a Bigfoot suit 
But he was up there filming a Bigfoot documentary to begin with. So presumably, yeah, he could have had a Bigfoot suit on hand. I guess what he says is he was, you know, he was making a movie but would eventually go on to see the actual Bigfoot. You know what I mean? Yeah. The movie that he was filming was actually a story about some cowboys who had gone into the forest to look for Bigfoot. (laughs) Art imitating life, you could say. Except in the movie, in Roger Patterson's movie, it was a retelling of a story that he had heard that took place in 1924. Okay. See, Roger Patterson, this, our story takes place in 1967. And in 1967, he was making a movie about a story he had heard that took place in 1924. It was something called uh, The Incident at Ape Canyon. Now, this is where the rabbit hole goes even deeper. So what inspired Roger Patterson to go looking for Bigfoot was that he had heard that in 1924... There were some gold prospectors who were out there uh, in the wilderness in the in the state of Washington near Mount St. Helens, the volcano. And they had come out of the woods terrified, telling stories that they had been attacked by seven foot tall ape men like creatures. The prospectors' names were Fred Beck, Gabe Lefevre, John Peterson, and Marion Smith. And they said that they had seen some gorilla men near a small cabin that they had been staying in while they had been out hunting for gold in the forest. According to them, in the summer of 1924, they were about eight miles away from a lake called Spirit Lake when they encountered four giant animals moving through the forest, walking on two legs with human-like strides. They were covered in long black hair, one of the miners reported to the Oregonian newspaper, and said their ears are about four inches long and stand straight up, and they have four toes, short and stubby. And they claimed that each of the animals weighed about 400 pounds. Now, I'm going to pause here and say, as a host of the Mega Strange podcast, that doesn't sound like Bigfoot. That sounds like Dog Man. Okay. Long, pointy ears. Pointy? Yeah. Four inch ears that stood straight up. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, you know, I know this is a story about Bigfoot, but I'm going to cast my own shadow of doubt. Could have been Dog Man. Could have been something. I don't know. This is the, ni- this is the story from 1924. I'm telling you, you bears. Those motherfuckers are scary as fuck. They stand on their fucking hind legs. This is a, this is a story from a hundred years ago. Yeah. And Johnny, it could be bears, but listen to what happened next. Taken aback at the sight of these huge beasts, one of the miners, the prospectors, a guy named Fred, grabs his rifle and starts shooting at the creatures. He says that he shot one of the animals three times and that the wounded animal toppled off of a cliff. Um, that was his first mistake. The men said that that night they went back to their cabin and they were awoken by the sounds of giant stones being hurled on their cabin uh, and giant bodies slamming against the walls of the cabin. Uh, the beast men were attacking the uh, miners as revenge for shooting one of them. Okay. It says the beast eventually tore a hole in the roof, allowing them to target Fred Beck, the rifleman himself. They pelted him with stones and rendered him unconscious for two hours. That's the story of Ape Canyon. Afterwards, the miners were able to come out of the woods and they reported this story to the Oregonian. Now, a couple of police did investigate the the canyon in 1924. These two rangers named J.H. Huffman and William Welsh, they hiked back to the canyon. They searched for the dead body of the supposedly shot ape man. They didn't find anything. They went back to the cabin. There was a hole in the roof. There were large stones there, but the rangers determined that the miners 
probably put the stones there themselves. That was their determination in the 20s. So you have to pick who you believe. Do you believe the cops? Or do you believe the miners who were there? Who fought the Sasquatches? Um, there was another incident later in the 60s of a skier who disappeared on the ridges of Ape Canyon. And the story about this skier, his name is Jim Carver. It says that he was with a skiing expedition and he, want, he was very, he was like one of the most experienced skiers of the expedition and he wanted to get a picture of the group as they came down this ridge. So he skied to the opposite side of the canyon to get a good position to photograph them. They never saw Jim Carver again. He disappeared. They did find his camera from his position, so they assume that that's where he was going to take the photograph from. And from the camera, they found a pair of tracks, skiing tracks. And it pre pretty much led straight to the edge of Ape Canyon uh, and fell in uh, and did the tracks end there. And they never found his body. His friends say that he must have been scared by something uh, really large to chase him. They They assume that there must have been a large predator chasing him to cause him to ski so feverishly straight off into the canyon. These were the stories that inspired uh, Roger Gimlin, or Roger Patterson and Gimlin to go out there hunting for uh, Bigfoot. Now, Johnny, you're just sitting there nodding along, absorbing yeah. all of this. What's your take so far? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> you're not sure? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, I'm just throwing like ape man stories at you. Stories from the 20s, stories from yeah. the 60s, disappearances I'm, 100 years ago. I'm waiting to get to the Bigfoot footage. All right. All right. So here we go. <laughs> That's all the warm up. Yeah. That's what uh, inspired these guys to go out looking for there. So on October 20th, 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Giblin took a couple of horses, took a couple of provisions. And they went Bigfoot hunting. They went to the nearby area of Blue Creek uh, uh, Mountain Track um, to find, uh, I'm sorry, they went to the area of the east bank of Bluff Creek to find these tracks. And it is said that sometime between 1.15 and 1.40 in the afternoon, they came to an overturned tree with a large root system uh, which was almost as high as a room. So the root system was almost as big as a room, but the tree had been like felled. There had been flooding recently in the area, so maybe the water knocked it over. Okay. When they came around the overturned tree, there was a log jam, a crow's nest left over from the flood of 64, and they spotted the figure behind the log jam nearly simultaneously either crouching beside the creek or standing there on the opposite side of the bank. Bob Gimlin described himself in a mild state of shock after first seeing the figure. Roger Patterson estimated the height to be six foot six inches. The film shows what Patterson and Gimlin claim is a large and hairy, bipedal, ape-like figure with short silvery brown or dark reddish brown or black hair covering most of its body, including its prominent breasts, according to this report. The figure in the film generally matches the description of Bigfoot offered by others who claim to have been a witness to the animal. Patterson says he was about 25 feet away from the creature when he was at his closest. He said that his horse reared up upon sensing uh, the figure there. And he took about 20 seconds getting out of the saddle, controlling his horse, getting around to the other side, and getting his camera from the saddlebag before he could run towards the figure while turning on his camera. While he's running towards the Bigfoot, he yells over his shoulder to Bob Gib uh, Gimlin, cover me, meaning get out a gun. Gimlin crosses the creek on horseback after Patterson has a... Uh, uh, run across the creek. Um, he's about 60 feet away from Patty, 
is what he estimates when he's on his horse. With a rifle in his hand, Gimlin gets off of his horse, but he doesn't point the rifle at the creature. The guys don't shoot Bigfoot because they remember the story from Ape Canyon Yeah, that Fred shot Bigfoot and later on Bigfoot came hunting. So they had made an agreement beforehand that if they found Bigfoot, they weren't going to shoot him. Um, they run after it. Patterson, with the camera in hands, falls to his knees and starts filming Bigfoot. And this is the footage that we get. It's only about uh, a minute worth of footage and only maybe 15 seconds of stable footage. But in the footage, we see that Bigfoot kind of looks over his shoulder back at the people who were filming. And Patterson would later say that the creature's expression was one of contempt and disgust. Similar to when an umpire tells you one more word and you're out of the game. That's what he felt. Um, it, to- it looked back at them a total of three times before disappearing into the grove of trees for about 14 seconds, and then it reappears for a moment uh, before disappearing again. Gimlin and Patterson claim to remount their horses, and they track the creature for about a mile um, before they lose it in the woods. They say the entire encounter before they started tracking it only lasted for about two minutes. Afterwards, they return to their campsite three miles away. They collect some plaster of Paris, and they go back and collect some Bigfoot footprints from Patty. Um, And that's what they're left with, the Bigfoot video and some footprints. So, obviously, from the gate, some people think that these guys are faking it. Uh, They claim that that's their story, but maybe the footage had been filmed a day earlier or two days earlier. They say that with the distance they traveled, it would be very unlikely that they would be able to do all the things they did in the timeline that they say. But other people say that, you know, it's a tight timeline, but it is plausible that they were able to see Bigfoot, track it for three miles, return to their camp, go back, get a plaster cast, and then make it um, back to their camp uh, for the night in the timeline that they said. Roger Patterson, after this um, encounter, dedicates the rest of his life to searching for Bigfoot. He starts a company called um, the North American Wildlife Research Association. Um, These guys actually install a Bigfoot trap in the woods of Washington. I have a picture of the Bigfoot trap. Can I show it to you? Yeah. Check that out. Like a washboard? (laughs) That's, uh, it's like a wooden. That wouldn't even trap me. Well, the gate like slams down when you're in there. Yeah, but like, is that hole so small? Right? Unless this is far away. So what they did is they operated this trap for five years. Mm -hmm. And they would fill it with um, dead animal carcasses. And if any animal would go in there, that gate would like slam down and trap them inside. Okay. You know what they trapped in there? Uh, uh, Lots of rabbits. A bunch of bears. Dude, I'm telling you, it's <laughs> fucking bears, dude. They have, did catch a bunch of... Have you seen a fucking photo of bears? Stand, they're fucking scary. <laughs> they did catch a bunch of bears. Yeah. In there. I'm telling you, it's a fucking bear. I cracked the code. I cracked the Bigfoot code. You think Bigfoot's just a bear? Big bear. Anyway. Um, yeah. Patterson uh, remained an active Bigfoot hunter for the rest of his life. He would even, like... Um, fund trips to South America to investigate claims that Bigfoot have been spotted in South America. And he wasted a lot of money because those actually did turn out to be hoaxes. <laughs> Gimlin, the other guy, um, pretty much didn't want to talk about it for the rest of his life. Uh, he had a wife who didn't like the publicity And he didn't like that people accused him of being a hoaxer or a quack. So he avoided the subject. But 
But every once in a while, he would go on record to speak about the incident, and he always maintained um, that what happened really happened and that it was true. There's a couple of different um, scientists who have weighed in on the video footage. One of them being uh, a prominent zoologist, Bernard Huvelmans. He's known as the father of cryptozoology. He says that he doesn't believe that, uh, that the animal's real. He thinks it's a guy in a suit um, because there are hair on the breast, which is not um, found a lot in primates. And he, he points to like anatomy things like the buttocks being insufficiently separated and the animal like retreats too calmly from men. So he doesn't believe it's an animal. Yeah. But then there's people like prominent primate expert John Napier, one time director of the Smithsonian's primate biology program. Only one time. Yeah, they didn't have he, him he back. Didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't win the election the second time. Oh. He was at one time the director of Smithsonian's primate biology program. He says, a uh, quote, I don't see I could not see a zipper and I still can't. I think we must leave the matter at that. Perhaps it's a man dressed up in a monkey skin. If so, it's brilliantly it's a brilliantly executed hoax and the unknown perpetrator will take his place with the great hoaxers of the world. Perhaps it was the first film of a new type of hominid quite unknown to science. So he's a primate expert and he leaves the window open. In 1969, anthropologist uh, Grover Kantz took the footage to Disney executive Ken Peterson and asked Peterson what he thought. Peterson said that his technicians would not be able to duplicate the film. In 1972, they took it to Disney's chief of animators and he was really impressed and he said that um if this was created by filmmakers it would have to be shot in a studio when he was told that this was filmed in the middle of the woods he said he shook his head and walked away you know like i don't know what to tell you okay. you shot this in the middle of the woods um yeah i guess it is exposed very well that's my always been my biggest takeaway from that footage is that it's like if if you're like like as you said before they like hopped off fucking horseback and whipped out a camera like yeah. the fact that it's exposed properly is wild. Yeah, it says it looks like it's shot in a studio. Yeah, exactly. Like, but they said nope, it's just shot out in the wild. And he's like, I don't understand how this could happen. Yeah, if they actually like hopped off a horse and started filming, it would have been like a fucking white yeah. frame. <laughs> Another person who's given comment to this is special effects uh, retired special effects makeup artist and award winning artist Bill Munns who. Uh, worked for Fox and MGM for many years. In his opinion, he says that the film depicts a non-human animal, not a man in a fursuit. He says that new diagnostic tests to its authenticity should be uh, done, especially at the arp armpit, a natural concave of skin folds versus artificial vertical creases. Basically, special effects artists who make fursuits say that thing looks really impressive. It looks really realistic. Um, Stan Winston also famously chimed in on this. He said that the suit could be produced for a thousand dollars, but that's, you know, Stan yeah. Winston's opinion. I think what's interesting is a lot of special effects artists, people who their business is to create suits like this say that that's incredibly difficult to create a lot of stuff that I haven't even quoted here that I was reading. We're talking about how new muscle and bone systems would have to be created underneath the suit to make it so realistic. So if it was created by a special effects department, it would be extremely expensive. Yeah. And to perpetrate that out in the woods would be difficult. Uh, my brain is doing like somersaults right now. Yeah. And I'm trying to think like what would baffle all these people back then? Hear me out. Okay. Imagine if they killed a bear or something and they like thought of this idea and they're like, all right, cut the bear open. I'll get inside. There are people who have come forward who claim to have been the person inside the suit. Yeah. I don't have the name here and I didn't include their story because it is highly contested. But I'll yeah. give you the breakdown here. 
There's people who have come forward who have claimed to be the actors inside the suit, and what they describe is that the suit was created out of horse hair. Okay. And that it was assembled in pieces. Mm. Um, that they hiked out there a couple miles away and then put the suit on. They have also suggested that Roger Patterson knew it was a hoax, but Bob Giblin did not. Okay. That possibly it was Roger Patterson perpetrating a hoax on Gimlin. Like it did like a Scooby-Doo. Yeah. But the the two people who say that it was a suit, mm. their stories conflict as to how the suit was made. One person says it was a full body suit, while another person says the suit was assembled in pieces, like a t-shirt with hands and arm pieces. Yeah, like I... Like I'm trying to think, like what would baffle all these uh, FX uh, people, and it, and it's pretty much just yeah, like you making something morbid, like something stitched out of yeah, like you know animal parts. Yes, but what other uh, scientists and anthropologists? Why the video has not been debunked? Why it still remains a mystery fifty years later? Is there is muscle definition? Mm -hmm. You can see like leg muscles retracting, and basically scientists say. If this is a guy in a suit, they got the anatomy perfectly correct. Yeah. They got it perfectly right. In fact, Grover Krantz, one of the anthropologists who's studied this extensively, has interviewed, had interviewed Roger Patterson and said that he thought Patterson could have perpetrated a hoax given the opportunity and resources. But he also argued that Patterson had, quote, nowhere near the knowledge or facilities to do so, nor for the matter of fact, uh, nor for that matter, did anyone else. When I talked about some of the more technical details of biomechanics, you know, the um, science of walking and how muscles interact, Bob Patterson showed that familiar blank look of a student who had been lost in the drift of explanation, but was still trying hard to pay attention. Yet he must have known all these details to create a hoax. For instance, he could see the anterior position of the front of the shin. But how that related to foot leverage was quite beyond him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, that's what, like... Uh, These me. guys, they got footprints. Yeah. And the footprints showed pressure points mm. in the foot. And this anthropologist was saying, you could have faked this footprint, but how would you know where to apply the pressure points of a primate's footprint? Who would have that kind of knowledge? Yeah. Who would... A rodeo clown? <laughs> an amateur boxer can fake a footprint that would fool an anthropologist. That's what I'm saying. That like my my fucked up brain's going to like they slid open a bear and they fucking some some guy got in there for a second. But it's not a bear footprint. Yeah, that's true. It's a it's a primate footprint. Yeah. Um, Patterson Roger Patterson died of Hodgkin's lymphoma in 1972. But a few days before he died, he did give a final interview about this fucking Bigfoot video. He told uh, author uh, Peter Byrne that he wished, in retrospect, that he would have shot the fucking Bigfoot. <laughs> he says, I wish... Then you would have known what it was. He said, I wish I would have shot the thing and brought the body out instead of getting a reel of film. Grover, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Bob Gimlin, his partner, later agreed they should have shot the creature and tried to bring it out. Both... For financial gain and to silence the naysayers. It's kind of sad to me that the guy who filmed the most famous Bigfoot video ever died saying, I shouldn't have filmed this video. I should have just shot the motherfucker <laughs> showing you the body. Yeah. Because it kind of ruined his life. Nobody believed him. I mean, it, it would have ruined his life regardless. Like if he shot Bigfoot, like that. Like, let's say it's 100% real. You, sh you shoot Bigfoot. It's like, what the fuck did I sh kill? His dream was to be the guy who discovered Bigfoot. Yeah. He believed Bigfoot was real. He wanted to be the guy who showed it to the world. He His dream was to become rich and famous for finding Bigfoot. He thought this video was going to do it. It didn't work out. Some people say it was a hoax. Maybe he wanted it so bad he faked it. But mm. if it is a hoax, kudos to him. Because 50 years later, anthropologists and scientists cannot definitively prove that it's a hoax. Let's look at the video. Oh. Let's look at it for it? ourselves. I have it. Not only do I have the video, I have a video that's uh, been stabilized and up to 4K Whoa. and slowed down. All right. We're so, going to figure it out. Johnny, you think this is a fucking bear? Let's look at it. Okay. That's a fucking guy, dude. 
This has been stabilized. So what they've done here is they've stabilized the wide shot and then they've like inserted the shaky footage to where it needs to be, right? They're like tracking the thing. Now it's been slowed down. Make this bigger for us. Full screen this for us, can you? It, it might fuck up uh, the recording. Oh, fuck. Well, go ahead and play it then. Now it's in slow motion, so you could really see the stride. If you were close, and maybe the people at home can full screen this and see for themselves, you can see the muscle, uh, the musculature, the muscle definition that the anthropologists have been talking about. He's kind of got like swagger. He's like... Yeah, I see it. You know, they're saying this thing is just walking out in the middle of the woods. Like, that's a big suit to be operating. Like, there it is. There's the, Patty. The thing that I always think about is uh, it almost feels like a guy trying his hardest to walk weird. Like, the way the arms go, like, the hands go out weird. Yeah. Like, I'm. that's the thing that always sticks with me where I was like this might be fake well if you think that's weird but that there I have I froze on the classic uh, pose there that's that's true that is the look uh so that is the video that is the story of the Roger uh, I'm sorry the Patterson Gimlin mm. video of Bigfoot mostly I mean it's it's such a long and detailed story there have been several books written about the subject if people are interested in more of this they can do an even bigger deep dive. Yeah. But it'll just tell you basically what I didn't cover was the various scientists they tried to contact and the opinions those scientists had. But yeah. at the end of the day, some people believe it's real. Other people don't. It's still highly contested. I think there's just so little evidence. Uh, you know, I, I learned a lot when I got into like CSI. Yeah. Like on the on show on TV, they make it seem so like, oh, we found this hair and we're able to. It's like. That's like a a one in whatever chance of finding anything, you know, like I, we I mean, now things are, are, are more technologically sound where we can figure shit out. But like once like a year or like a, even a day passes like and, and there's no more information, like there's not a lot you have to go off of. Yeah. Uh, for most things. So what I did is I went to Reddit uh, uh, and there's a very interesting thread, which is Redditors. What, in your opinion, is the best evidence of Bigfoot actually existing? Okay. And I've pulled together the best evidence. Mm. Now, admittedly, the number one most convincing argument for most people on Reddit is not something that's easy to share with people on this podcast, and that is the fact that there are so many casts of Bigfoot prints from all over the world that look similar that are consistent with each other that have bone structure that have fingerprints, which you can't fake. Some of them show scars and injuries mm -hmm. and that these have been verified by primate experts to be anatomically accurate for most people, the actual footprints that there are an even number of right and left footprints uh, statistically speaking, that come from so many different regions. They're saying, how could you fake this? Yeah. Um, it's there's to them. That is the overwhelming evidence, but I don't have 200 different footprint casts to show you here. You'll have to look into that for yourself if you're really interested in it, but that's the smoking gun for most people. For other people, there are smaller incidental pieces of evidence that convince them. One for a lot of people is a thermal, a video like thermal footage from Florida, which is known as the Brown video. This supposedly catches. Hey. Uh, Sorry, it's like a ween term. <laughs> this supposedly catches uh, what, really Brown video. No, uh, saying something's brown is oh, like okay. this is. It means it's video. like fucked up. <laughs> yeah, this is the Brown video of Bigfoot. This is a heat sensor that caught Bigfoot out in the woods. Let's look at this. Oh. If you're listening, good. If you're listening to the audio podcast, come on. Yeah, what are you doing? Subscribe to us on YouTube. You got to see this video evidence. 2012. May 8th, 2012. Sasquatch Hunters film. What may be a Sasquatch? Here's the full clip. There's no audio, so don't worry. This, like, are most... they film this with their fucking eyes? 
Like, what the fuck am I? <laughs> what, what am I looking at? Yo, there he is. There oh, he goes. shit. That was it. That was it. Like most Bigfoot videos, it's just half a second. I wanna, oh. Now, of course, you're going to say this is a guy in a suit, but the researchers claim that it is not. So they say it's footage of an animal being filmed in the wild. You take it for, you know, yeah. you take it for what it is. It looks like the Aphex Twin logo to me. A lot of it, maybe it's the Aphex Twin logo. So, so a lot of people say this is a guy in a suit, but for others, they say like, hey, the researchers are saying this is real. This is pretty clear footage of yeah. a Bigfoot. Um, I mean, it's in Florida. We never know. It could be like some dude on bath salts. That's what they always say. Dude. Yeah, that's what they always say. Millions of footprints all over the world. Yeah. They've got scars and broken bones. They show primate anatomy. You've got the video footage there. You think that's a guy, a bat, your bath salts? It could be a crackhead who got a hold of the wrong stuff. All right. Well, this next piece of evidence is 100% not going to convince you. Yeah. I actually am afraid to show you this evidence, Johnny, because this is going to ruin make my you, life. This is going to make you believe in Sasquatch less than you already do. <laughs> but for a lot of people, this is another smoking gun. This is an audio recording okay. from the 1970s. Okay. A bit of paranormal paraphernalia that has come to be known as the Sierra Sounds. Mm. This is two Bigfoot hunters who claim to have made audio contact with Bigfoot they are doing Bigfoot calls and Bigfoot responds, and they have a conversation with Bigfoot. Now, I will tell you before we go into this, the descriptions of this say that they call it samurai talk. They, they say that Bigfoot, what you'll hear sounds in this video that sound like samurai talk. That almost sound like somebody is impersonating the Japanese language. From far away, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, but this is the samurai talk. This wow. is the information that I got, and I'm just relaying the details. Hell yeah, clearly, so that people out there are informed on the leading Bigfoot we're, science. We're about to be mega canceled, am I right, people? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Hey, it's from the 70s. Yeah, yeah, cancel them. So we're going to listen to this video. It's about four minutes long, but I think if we skip ahead to the three minute and 15 second part, that's where the real juicy conversation starts. Okay. This is the audio recording, the Sierra sound. This is creepy audio, by the way. If you're listening to the audio version, this is for you. Guess who? <laughs> there are uh, there are apes that make noises like that. They have little pouches. Yeah, like the North Air, North American ape, like Bigfoot. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Where was this recorded? Uh oh, I don't have the. Oh, I'll find the information. Is that the people recording? <laughs> it was recorded in the Sierra Nevada mountains in Eastern California. Okay. In the early 1970s. Go ahead and skip to the 3 minute 15 second mark. I cannot see. You hear that banging? That's Sasquatch. 3 minute what? 15 seconds. Right here, right here, right here. 
Go ahead and pause it. Go ahead and pause it. He said, like, it's trying to talk to us like they talk to each other. Oh. So they're assuming they're, they think that Sasquatch is mimicking their sounds. So they're going to start making noise, and Sasquatch is mimicking the noises back. So you'll hear the faint sound in the distance. That's Sasquatch. It's like doing uh, skinwalker stuff. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Those uh, are the Sierra sounds. Okay. Those are the Sierra sounds. There are uh, birds. That First it's bears, <laughs> then it's apes, but then it's like, oh, wait, no, an ape in North America. That's what we're there. Are, then it's birds. Have you ever seen those videos of birds like recreating the sounds? It's fucking scary. Oh, a mockingbird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a mockingbird. Maybe it's a mockingbird. I don't know. Do they have mockingbirds in uh, Eastern California? I'm not sure. Well, okay. sorry, I, I, I'm very skeptical with Bigfoot because I almost want him to be fake Yeah, because I love the idea of him being fake and having all these shows and stuff where people act like he's real. It's, oh, no, it I just makes you. me like it makes me I love the idea of Bigfoot and I love the idea of him being fake because yeah. there's just so many people pouring like those uh, Discovery Channel shows or whatever where people go out and looking for him is like oh. if, right. if, if Bigfoot's not real, 10 out of 10. So the scientists don't see how the video could be a suit. Mm. Special effects artists don't think the video depicts a guy in a suit. Okay. The footprints retrieved are verified by primate experts, and they match footprints from all over the, the country and the world. And we have multiple thermal videos, which depict something that looks like Bigfoot. And we have audio recording of people who claim to be talking to Bigfoot. But you think it's all bears. And then the last piece of evidence that is most convincing to the people of Reddit, and I know this one isn't going to mean anything to you, Johnny, <laughs> but they say the PTSD of people who witness Bigfoot. Okay. They say this is something that rarely gets covered in Bigfoot discussions, but when you meet somebody who has witnessed Bigfoot, the trauma that they display when they relive their stories is very convincing. And a lot of people think that these people can't be faking it because just that you know, they just believe that this, it, they're so affected by the experience. It, I'll give them that. Like even regardless of what they see, like, they they see that and they believe it and that's traumatic no no matter so, what so i have a video of a guy who claims to have seen bigfoot and he uh -huh. seems a little traumatized by the experience not crazy but he certainly seems to believe his story and let's watch this yeah hope these videos don't get flagged a lot of people make fun of me, but I don't care. I know it's there. Tim Peeler swears he had an encounter with one of the most legendary beasts in history, Bigfoot. Well, he was what I would call a Sasquatch. Peeler says there's no film laughing? of his recent sighting <laughs> because he was too nervous. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm laughing because I want this sign really bad. <laughs> the cow crossing sign is so good. I want that on the set. ...to go for his camera. But he says Bigfoot walked right by I'm also him. laughing at the person having to get this B-roll. He was too nervous to go for his camera. I Trauma. He had gray hair and a gray beard that come down here. And, but he had long hair that was a yellowish gray. He says he spotted the creature oh, one night when he was startled by his dog's barking, and he peered out the window, and there it was. I talked rough to him and run him off. And he come right by me. He wasn't 10 foot from me. He went back out that path. Peeler vows to get proof. <laughs> you know, I he, got missed, he missed him the first time. I got the tiniest camera you've ever seen. Camera you can keep in your pocket. And think about that, Apple. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Next time.
I love his little eye. Again, why doesn't he just have a cell phone? <laughs> Seeing is believing. So I'll try to get him on film. A St. Louis University biology professor says there have been more than 2,500 Bigfoot sightings in the past What the fuck is that? Is that like a blowtorch? What the fuck is that? It's Bigfoot spray. Oh. Years in every state and parts of Canada. Myra Lopez. A Bigfoot the collar. Press. That was the best news thing I've ever seen. It was short, sweet, strange as hell. Uh, a lot of like great little nuggets. There's a dog. You think that guy's lying? 10 out of 10. Do you think that guy's lying? I don't even care at that point. That was just great footage. <laughs> Bigfoot's out there, I'm telling you. And when you've seen Bigfoot, it changes you. A lot of people don't fear Bigfoot, but some people should. Some people do. Let's go to this next clip. No, nope. no context. He is just a good old country boy. A father and grandfather now gone <laughs> after a noodling murder? trip with a friend. The OSBI says on Saturday, Larry Sanders and Jimmy Knighton headed to the South Canadian River to catch catfish with their hands. But later things would go awry. He believed that Mr. Knighton um, had, had basically tricked him into to being out there. That's when agents say Save Sanders Cook discovered him. Jimmy intended to feed him to Sasquatch. Yes. And that yes, he dude. Jimmy was trying to get away from him so that the Sasquatch could eat Larry. Trying to get away from him so that the Sasquatch could eat Larry. Records say the two, quote, fought on the ground for roughly an hour. He reported striking him multiple times and then also strangling him. Later, Knighton's ex-wife, Stacey Kelly, says Sanders drove Knighton's truck back to Knighton's home where she and Knighton's son lives. He was asking, I guess, where his dad was, and he said, your dad's not coming back. She says Knighton and Sanders recently reconnected. What great photos they have to show. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Years after high Couldn't school. get better photos? He was trying to keep Larry out of trouble a lot. And their son dating Sanders' daughter. Not only are they tied to Jimmy, but, you know, now they have to live with the fact that their dad is the one that did this. Court documents reveal Sanders told family what happened, and they called police. The 53-year-old later arrested on an outstanding warrant while the OSBI was called in. Mr. Sanders was able to... Um, provide the interviewing agents with uh, a map um, that ultimately led to Mr. Knighton's body. Now two families are left trying to understand. He is still a, a person and he has a family and they have feelings. Oh no. But he's not just a news story and he's not a Facebook joke and he's not any of these things. He is so much deeper than that. In Pontotoc County, Caitlin Okay, uh, so that guy tried to kill the other guy to get Bigfoot to show up, or were they like trying to run See, away from Bigfoot? This is, you, you I'm know, so confused. Exactly, you're confused. Either way, I'm sad because of that woman. You should was... be sad because <laughs> it's sad. You think Bigfoot's a big joke. Yeah. You think, oh, it's a hoax. Bigfoot's out here destroying families, <laughs> destroying lives, okay? Oh my God. That woman said it. Everybody thinks this guy is a joke. They think he's a Facebook joke. They think he's a news article, but he is a deep and complex man. And he was out in the woods uh -huh. with his friend. Yeah. And he became convinced that Bigfoot was nearby and was going to eat one of them. <laughs> one of them was going to get eaten by Bigfoot. And it was either him or his friend. And they wrestled on the ground next to that creek. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, fist fighting for over an hour. <laughs> Is what the report said. <laughs> Over an hour. <laughs> Could you imagine? I can't believe you're laughing. Sorry, just if uh, they had like a Metal <laughs> Gear fucking battle. Me laugh. <laughs> this is, can you imagine? Oh my wrestling God. for over an hour for your life, dude. Is a life and death battle for over an hour because Bigfoot, because Bigfoot is coming for you. <laughs> and one of you is gonna get eaten. By Why Bigfoot? didn't they just both run away? Why did Why did one have to die? He thought that the other guy was leaving him mm. to be eaten by Bigfoot. And he was going to stop the other guy from leaving him. Oh, my God. Now, if you don't think if you don't believe in Bigfoot, then. You probably think this guy's guilty, crazy. Guilty of murder, killed his friend for no reason. But dude, how do you spend an hour and not like <laughs> click out like, oh, shit, let's like. <laughs> After like 15 minutes, I'd be like, I'm sorry, let's let's get away from Bigfoot. Hey, I'm sorry, I tried to kill you for 15 minutes. Yeah. Can we just go home? Yeah, let's fucking I'm tired. 
All I'm saying is, what if Bigfoot is real? I'm imagining like a Mortal Kombat uh, level, and there's Bigfoots in the background. All like I'm saying them. is, if Bigfoot is real, that just casts a new light on this story. Yeah. It just adds a new element. I, I, I will say, I'm sorry for like genuinely like someone died, and that's sad. Uh, I'm sorry for laughing, but the, the, the context of how the person died is very funny. Man. A death occurred, but the circumstances are so bizarre. Yeah, I just you, have to laugh. You have to laugh because yeah. it's so outside of uh, the normal realm of reality. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, I think I might have some more footage. Actually. Okay. I don't know. That might be the end of it. Let's see. what. I oh, no, I do. We have recent Bigfoot sightings. Oh, shit. I have recent Bigfoot sightings to show you. The evidence continues. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> look at this sighting, Johnny. Dude, the Jack Links Bigfoot is <laughs> like, that's 10 out of 10. Got a little raccoon. Dude. What's he doing to that? And raccoon? of course, the fucking Punisher logo. Yeah, I. this is somebody who uh, is out here defending Bigfoot. I feel like we saw this fucking truck when we were in uh, by Dollywood. Yeah, except it was the back of a police car. <laughs> All right, this one's a joke. This is, I have real footage. Oh. I have. This is they from just, October 26th that? of this year. Did okay. It was like two, three weeks ago. I'm afraid. Oh my God. I'm starting to think Bigfoot only goes after Southern oh my people. God. Oh my God. Finally, did you see that? Did you see that? That's it. That's the Whoa. clip. October 26th. That's wild. That's uh, yeah, about two and a half weeks ago. Yeah, big film goes for Southern people. What you think, Bigfoot's in New York City? That dude, that's a movie there. <laughs> Bigfoot in New York City. Bigfoot in NYC. He he goes into a bodega and then he asks for a chopped cheese. What do, do you it. think? Wait, what do you think about that video? Uh, that's in Baxter, Tennessee. It's hard because I feel like whenever we show newer videos, I feel like I get like in the comments, someone will be like, "Oh, that was debunked yesterday." Um, I definitely want to like do more research into it, but it, it looks, it was scary. Uh, it's a little s suspicious to me that it was so close to Halloween. Oh my God. But, yeah, uh, but they didn't have any Halloween decorations. Yeah, that's so. true. But then, but on top of this, like, man, does no one have a fucking iPhone? Like, why is it always the grainiest? Footage? You gotta zoom in, bro. Yeah, you can't true, just yeah. get up to big, big foot with the macro lens. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the Bigfoot TikTok here. Bigfoot's going to do a TikTok dance. What does that say? I can't. Yeah. Bigfoot's got to do uh, Orange Justice. You can skip forward a little bit. Oh. It's so short. This one's a little hard to see because this is an eagle's nest camera. Uh huh. But there's a creature in the top right corner. And there they zoom in on it right there. Okay. Yeah, that's creepy. Is that a bear? Possibly. This one I think I could zoom in. I don't know, swinging arms, big steps, black matte fur, classic Bigfoot description. I like this one because it it was uh, filmed accidentally. But is, is it going on its hind legs now or go, going back on all fours? Oh, it's jumping. There's Bigfoot walking around. Bipedal creature. I can't say if it's Bigfoot for sure. Listen. The videos are coming out left and right. There's over a million unrelated sightings from all over the world. The footprints show prints on the toes. They show bones and scar tissue. They show accurate primate anatomy. The videos cannot be debunked. We have the guys talking to Bigfoot mm. on tape. We have the guys fighting over Bigfoot. Uh, I just will say I do like that footage that we just watched because, it, like I said, I like when there's no human element to it. Like, that was just set up and happen to capture something mm -hmm. uh those ones are the scariest to me because uh i'll always have a shadow of a doubt when like two people go out with cameras but the bird cam doesn't lie no the bird cam do doesn't lie and i'm sure someone sifted through like hundreds of hours of footage and was like wait what the fuck is that and that's what scares me is, is stuff like that so would you say we got you fucking got me dude we got him! Woo! Well, that is uh, the conclusive end of the episode that I think. That's my final piece of evidence, and All I right. finally convinced you that Bigfoot 
might be real, might exist. Uh, do you want to? Hey, I was thinking tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm not busy. If you want to go catfishing, um, oh, bare hand noodling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I uh, heard there's. Uh, don't bring your cell phone. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no cell phones. Uh, no, no, no form of self defense at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bring anything. Just uh-huh. uh, uh, yeah, because I hear there's a uh, Bigfoot out there. Yeah, yeah. But don't worry. I know. I know how to talk to Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm fluent in a. Uh, Samurai speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. Good night. Good night, everyone. Uh, what, what do we usually say at the end? Uh, stay strange. Stay everybody. strange. Follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Follow new episodes Saturday and mailbag episodes coming out in the middle of the week. Uh, subscribe. Turn on notifications. Instagram. Uh, Mega Strange Podcast. Twitter. Mega Strange 666. We'll see you next time. Good night.